what's the scariest looking crocodile you've ever seen? If you think it's the saltwater or the Nile crocodile, that'll change by the end of this video. Imagine a crocodile the length of an elephant running towards you. That's right, these land crocs were not only massive, they were ready to put the work in. Sebesidae is the best example of the land crocs that were the replacement for dinosaurs. These huge monsters could grow heavier than a polar bear and yet be much faster and deadlier than your average modern crocodile. And in this video, we're going to tell you all about these land crocs, so stay tuned till the end. Let's start off with how they looked. For starters, Sebesids had long, narrow skulls with elongated snouts, unlike the flat and broad skulls of modern crocodiles. Their snouts were filled with sharp, pointed teeth that were perfect for gripping and slicing through prey. And unlike crocodiles, these teeth were conical rather than flattened and triangular, hinting that Sebesids had a different diet or feeding method compared to today's crocodiles. Plus, their skulls weren't so ordinary either. Sebesids often had prominent bony knobs or ridges on top of their heads, which might have been used for display or as attachment points for strong jaw muscles. Again, unlike crocodiles, whose eyes are on top of their heads, Sebesids had their eye sockets on the sides, giving them a far better range of view. This was probably a huge edge when it came to hunting or avoiding predators. Needless to say, most predators would have avoided them anyway, judging by their size. Now, Sebesids varied in size quite a bit. Most were about 6.5 to 10 feet, or 2 to 3 meters long, similar to modern top predators in South America. But the largest Sebesid was truly something else. Its skull alone was 3.2 feet or 1 meter long, and it's estimated to have been over 20 feet. That's 6 meters in length, weighing between 3,500 to 3,850 pounds, or 1,600 to 1,740 kilograms. We've got a lot more on this specific Sebesid later on in the video, so make sure you stay tuned till the end. Now, even in external features, the Sebesid's bodies were quite different from modern crocodiles. They had four well-developed limbs that were positioned underneath their bodies, rather than out to the sides like crocodiles have. This limb structure, along with their relatively long and thin limbs, suggests that Sebesids were more active on land. They had five big-tip digits on each foot, which would have been great for digging, climbing, and grabbing prey. Their skin was covered in small, diamond-shaped scales called osteoderms, which were made of bone tissue. These scales provided protection and possibly even helped with temperature regulation or camouflage. And these osteoderms alone can teach us a lot. For example, some species had thicker osteoderms, indicating they might have faced a higher degree of stress or more dangerous predators. Sebesids also differed from modern crocodilians when it came to hunting strategies. But there was still one similarity between the two. Like modern reptiles, Sebesids were cold-blooded, meaning they relied on the environment to regulate their body temperature. This might make you think they were slow and sluggish, also like modern reptiles, but that was not the case. For one, global temperatures were higher during the first half of the Cenozoic, which helped even cold-blooded animals like the Sebesids thrive. And even though they had a lower metabolism compared to endotherms, they had a higher metabolism than most other cold-blooded animals, so they were significantly more active than typical ectotherms. However, not active enough to chase their prey over long distances. That's why when it came to hunting, Sebesids were ambush predators. They'd lie in wait, hidden and still, and then charge at their prey with a burst of incredible speed. And once they got close, it was definitely game over for the prey. That's because, unlike most crocodilians that rely on a strong bite alone, Sebesids had both a strong bite and sharp recurved teeth, which were perfect for slicing through flesh. So their hunting style was a mix of brute strength and precise cutting. Add to that their large size, and you get one of the deadliest predators of the Cenozoic. However, not all Sebesids would have been able to take down larger prey. In fact, Sebesids actually started off pretty small when compared to their largest species. The first known Sebesid is Ogrisuchus, which was discovered in Spain and lived about 67.7 million years ago during the age of dinosaurs. So yes, Sebesids did coexist with dinosaurs, but they probably didn't leave a huge mark. 
That's because Ogrisuchus was only three feet or one meter long and weighed around 20 pounds or nine kilograms. At the same time, it had to live alongside much bigger animals, including eight species of carnivorous dinosaurs like the Pyroraptor, which also could have been its competitors. So it's safe to say this little guy spent his days in hiding, only preying on small mammals and possibly dinosaur eggs. However, it did have the sebacid teeth and powerful jaws, so it could have hunted infant dinosaurs as well. So while it wasn't a top predator, it certainly did well enough for itself. In fact, its smaller size might actually have saved it from a very early extinction. You see, sebacids were part of a group called Sebecosuchians, and other Sebecosuchians of the time were much larger than Ogrisuchus. During the Mesozoic, these Sebecosuchians, like the Baurusuchids, were significant predators, though they were still overshadowed by larger theropod dinosaurs. But then why was Ogrisuchus so small? One possibility is due to its isolated European habitat, which had diverged from South America for millions of years. Whatever the case, this small size might have been crucial for its survival past the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. Due to its smaller size and possibly slow metabolism, Ogrisuchus was able to hide during the catastrophe and survive on minimal food in a post-impact world. So it looks like the Sebacids had the last laugh after all, because these creatures would only get bigger and much more terrifying from this point onwards. Take Zalmasuchus, for example, which was the next in line in a long list of Sebacids. This Sebacid from Bolivia rose to dominance in the early Paleocene, just half a million years after the mass extinction event. That's a very short evolutionary period, considering it was roughly three times larger than Ogrisuchus which helped it become the largest predator in its habitat of river and lake environments. But despite its habitat, Zalmasuchus's rounded tail suggests it wasn't adapted for swimming like modern crocs. Then again, it had its full of fun on land because of the severe lack of competition in its ecosystem. Still, Zalmasuchus only preyed on small mammals and amphibians, not weighing more than 2.2 pounds or one kilo so we're still a long way from the real ferocious Sebacids. A good place to start, though, would be Sebacus. The Sebacid was a significant addition to the late Paleocene and emerged around 59.4 million years ago across Bolivia, Argentina, Colombia, and potentially Brazil. Sebacus is special because it marked a notable increase in size among Sebacids, measuring approximately 10 feet or 3 meters long and weighing from 115 up to 250 pounds, or 52 to 113 kilograms. That's as much as a male spectacled bear. Its habitat was also diverse, having a large number of mammals like notungulates, meridiolestidans, and xenothans, along with smaller creatures like rodents, bats, and even primates. It's likely Sebacus preyed on all these creatures. But how did it take on much bigger animals? Well, Sebacus saw an improvement in not just size, but also dentition. What truly set Sebacus apart was its T-Rex-like dentition, featuring blade-like teeth similar to those of large theropods. These teeth were perfect for slicing through meat, resembling those of Tyrannosaurus with serrated edges and sharp clefts. However, it did have one weakness. Its brain case scan suggests Sebacus had primitive intelligence, giving competitors and prey a slight edge over it. So even Sebacus wasn't close to the true land croc. That would be Barinasuchus, the apex predator of the golden era of Sebacids during the Eocene. This titan roamed across Venezuela, Argentina, and Peru, dominating its environment as the largest land predator since the dinosaurs. Adults of this colossal creature weighed a jaw-dropping 3,800 pounds, or 1,720 kilos, towering over even the biggest polar bears and stretching up to a length of 33 feet or 10 meters. Safe to say, nothing else came close to this behemoth, and Barinasuchus's habitat was its kingdom. This massive predator likely feasted on a variety of large mammals, like notungulates and glyptodonts, some weighing over 2,000 pounds or one ton, establishing itself as the apex predator of its ecosystem. And it did not discriminate. From smaller sebacids to possibly even terror birds, every animal might have found itself on its menu. 
and it'd have had no trouble chasing after them. That's because it was surprisingly fast despite its bulk, thanks to its well-developed legs and light armor composed of osteoderms along its head, back, and tail. And while this monster was busy terrorizing South America, its relatives were also leaving their mark in Europe. Yes, Sebacids once roamed more than just the green landscapes of South America. And no, it wasn't just Ogrisuchus. Fossils discovered in Europe, particularly in France and Spain, show that multiple Sebacids occupied these territories. But they were obviously no match for Berinosuchus. Two discovered fossils were Iberosuchus, which was 6.5 feet or 2 meters long, and Beregesuchus, which was 5 feet or 1.5 meters long. The true European apex predator, though, was Dentineosuchus. Dentineosuchus emerged about a million years after Berinosuchus and picked France as its hunting ground. Estimates put its length at around 17.5 feet or 5 meters, so it was smaller than Berinosuchus, but still the largest terrestrial predator in Cenozoic Europe. But what truly set Dentineosuchus apart were its formidable features. It had a weirdly large skull, armed with robust teeth, making it a formidable hunter. Its powerful jaws could take down even the largest prey, including perisodactyls weighing over two tons. But unfortunately, all European Sebacids, including Dentineosuchus, didn't enjoy their reign for long. The Sebacids met their end in Europe around 34 million years ago, during the Eocene. The last fossils of European Sebasuchians date back to this period, and their extinction is tied to the Grand Coupier, a significant extinction event. This event wiped out many native European mammals, as well as these intriguing reptiles. The exact cause of the Grand Coupier remains a mystery, but it's believed to be linked to a period of global cooling. This climate change likely had a more severe impact on reptiles than on mammals, leading to the decline and eventual disappearance of the Sebacids in Europe. Like we told you, the Sebacids were cold-blooded and basically dependent on the external temperature. So as the climate cooled, the Sebacids couldn't adapt as well as mammals, and they vanished from the continent about 37 million years ago. On the other hand, South American Sebacids couldn't have been enjoying more, and their reign was far from over. In fact, the last Sebacids met their end only 5 million years ago during the late Miocene. While the exact reasons for their extinction are still debated, there are multiple theories. One possibility is that changes in fresh water supplies brought on by sea level fluctuations impacted their habitats. Although Sebacids could live in both fresh water and salt water, a shift in sea levels and river patterns might have reduced their ideal living conditions. Another theory suggests that early human activity contributed to their extinction. Around the same time, early hominids appear, and it's possible that human habitat degradation and hunting played a role in the disappearance of Sebacids and other large mammals. Another reason could have been the local climate changes caused by the rising Andes Mountains and a constant decline in global temperatures. These environmental shifts disrupted their ecosystems, making survival increasingly difficult. Whatever the cause of their extinction, one thing's for sure, the Sebacids, though now gone, were truly remarkable creatures of their time. While other crocodile relatives adapted to living on land during the Cenozoic era, none quite matched the success of the Sebacidae family. It's pretty impressive that these reptiles managed to rise to the top of the food chain in an era dominated by mammals. And to top it off, they even reached sizes comparable to the fearsome theropod dinosaurs reminding us of the age of reptiles during the age of mammals. And that's a wrap. Which Sebacid would you want to see for yourself? The gigantic Berinosuchus or the terrifying Dantineosuchus? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.